الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear brothers and sisters Today I want to remind myself first and foremost and all of us about a topic that we do not like to talk about in the Muslim community. But just because we try to act like it doesn't exist, it doesn't automatically go away. And it is a topic of domestic abuse and violence. When family members at home are making each other's lives hell. And recently, I'm sure you've all heard that there have been a string of cases where a Muslim man ended up killing his wife and then ended up killing himself as well. This is the ultimate bad uh, the ultimate nightmare that we imagine when it comes to the representation of Islam. You know, while I was preparing for this khutbah, I was looking up a certain hadith. And when I searched for it on the internet, the entire first page of Google, it was not anything related to the hadith, but it was actually the opposite of it. It was non-Muslim saying that Islam allows and permits oppression against women and violence against women. But my dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the Quran and we look at the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in a comprehensive manner without taking a, an ayah here or there out of context, we see that this is not the case in Islam. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given is the, the relationship of marriage such sanctity that, the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given women the status of being the closest thing to you as a husband, and the husband being the closest thing to the wife. And the Prophet وسلم, said that after Iman and Taqwa, the greatest blessing that a person can have is to have a righteous spouse. And we see from the example of the Prophet وسلم, as a husband, that his wives are the ones who are our mothers and our teachers and they're telling us about the character of the Prophet وسلم, at home. He is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented to us to follow. And Aisha radiallahu anha said that Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never raised his hand against a woman or a child. My dear brothers and sisters, 
The unfortunate reality is that many of the Muslims come from cultures, from countries, where such practices are pretty common. But just because they are common, it does not mean that it is justified by Islam. If that is not enough reason for us to stop doing that, we must understand that for it to be happening in America, even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took you out of that culture and out of that uh, custom, and now you are living among other people who are looking to antagonize Islam at any possible chance that they can get. For us to provide that opportunity, it is really a sad case. My dear brothers and sisters, a lot of us may not even understand what domestic abuse is and how it is defined. And just because we don't understand it, some of us may be engaging in it, not knowing how much harm I am causing to the other person. Now, now my dear brothers and sisters, abuse can occur by a man or by a woman. There are plenty of cases where the abuser is the woman. However, the vast majority of the cases are not this way. The vast majority of the cases are simply a case of the strong taking advantage of his strength. And it is the man that is abusing the wife in the vast majority of the cases, simply because of, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created men stronger than women. Men can be louder, can be boastful, can be aggressive. And men can get away with it. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and our Prophet وسلم, tells us the severe severity of oppression against anyone. The severity of oppression against anyone. And if a person is oppressing his wife, or a child, or anyone else, then this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold this person accountable for. Our Prophet وسلم, he would dedicate part of his khutbah and the, the, the largest khutbah he gave, the farewell khutbah, part of that, one-fifth of that khutbah is to encourage and to command the Muslims to be kind to their women. And, Allah, and the Prophet وسلم, equated women and orphans and he said that beware of mistreating these two weak ones, the women and the orphans. And we all know how many hadith and Quranic ayat are about de dealing with orphans. And our Prophet ﷺ equated them. He said, beware of mistreating the women and the orphans. The Prophet ﷺ was asked by a companion. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what are the rights that a wife can expect from her husband? What right can any wife demand of her husband? And the Prophet ﷺ said that you should give her food when you eat. Now, we have to understand this in context of the Prophet ﷺ's time, where because of the Jahili period, women were still not at the same level as men in terms of their status, their importance in society. And this was the reason why they used to bury their daughters alive. So the Prophet ﷺ, he's telling them that it is not appropriate for you to be eating while your wife is hungry. If you are both poor, then you both suffer together. It should not be that, well, I am more important, so I will eat. And you should clothe her when you clothe yourself. That she lives on the same standard as you. You know, really, you think about it that this is the, the, what's happening before. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, no, she has to live on the same standard as you are. And he said, and do not strike her on the face. 
Do not strike her on the face, which was the most common type of striking. That they would slap her. And the Prophet ﷺ said, do not do so. And, and he said, do not revile her, which is, wala tuqabbiha, and do not make her feel ugly. And we'll talk about that, what that really means in today's terminology. And, and do not separate from her except in her own house. Meaning that if you have a conflict with each other, if you have a disagreement, if you have an argument and you can't stand being with each other, just because you are the one who is paying the rent, you cannot say you get out of the house. But rather, she stays in the house and you go elsewhere. And in fact, even our Prophet ﷺ had a big argument with his wives. And when this happened, the Prophet ﷺ left the house and he slept in, the, in another place for one month. But he did not say, you go back to your family or you get out of this house. My dear brothers and sisters, it's important to understand that every couple has disagreements and arguments are normal. In fact, they say that if you're not having any argument at all, there might be a problem because you have, might have reached a point where you don't care about this relationship anymore and you have reached a point where you say, you know what, it's not worth arguing over it. So disagreements with each other, having different views is normal part of a relationship. However, and even one, or one of them getting angry, the other one getting angry, also normal. One person feeling hurt or the other person feeling hurt, also normal. However, what is not normal is that if there is fear of one partner, if one of them is afraid of the other, is intimidated by the other or injured by the other. What is abuse is when one person in that relationship dominates the other and seeks to control them. In fact, they say that you know, abuse generally tends to be about power and control. That one person wants to completely dominate the other. And this is not the way we see from our Prophet ﷺ. We see that his wives are disagreeing with him at times. You know, not in matters of Islam, not in matters of Sharia, because he is the messenger of Allah, but in normal household matters. The Prophet ﷺ allows that. And he doesn't say, how can you be a Muslim when you're disagreeing with me? It is abuse when one partner fears speaking up or challenging the other. If it has reached a point where the person says, well, if I speak up, I'm going to be punished. So let me not speak up. This is not normal real relationship. Also, if there are consequences for challenging, which may include things like threats or insults or hitting, this is not normal. Public humiliation is not normal. And when these things occur as a pattern, you know, everybody can make a mistake. And sometimes a person can make a serious mistake. And that one mistake may be forgivable by the other partner. But when this is regularly happening or it's happening as a pattern, it happens every so often, then this is the classic definition of domestic abuse. And my dear brothers and sisters, our Prophet ﷺ told us that the best of you are the ones who are best to your families. The strange thing that happens in the Muslim community and in other communities as well, but we're not worried about them, we're worried about us, is that we come across brothers who are very nice and kind in the masjid. You know, people say, this person is so fun, he's so good to hang out with, he's so generous, he's so giving. But then you come across that their family doesn't view them the same way. This is a serious problem for all of us. This is hypocrisy. The Prophet ﷺ is saying that if you have to be good, then you ha it's more important to be good to your family at home. That if your family says that you are a good person, then you are a good person. My dear brothers and sisters, abusers, of course today we're talking about spousal abuse. But abuse can occur from different people. 
It could be sometimes that a parent is abusive towards a child. Sometimes a child may be abusive towards the parents. Sometimes you have an in-law. Sometimes another relative who some sort, has some sort of influence on you. Sometimes you have a poor, uh, like, you know, elderly uh, person living at home, and there is like a household help that's coming to help them, to shower them, to feed them, and things like that. And that person might be the abuser. They might be taking their money, they might be insulting them, and things like that happen all the time. Sometimes it's other family members. And victims generally tend to be the women and the children. Generally, they tend to be the women and the children and the elderly. Because basically, people abuse those who they consider to be weak. And if that weak person is not able to stand up for themselves, is not able to defend themselves, then that abuse may happen again and again and again. And my dear brothers and sisters, today this is a different form of a khutbah. I know that you are not used to hearing this. But the thing is that we will never get any other time when we will have this many people gathered together where we can remind the people what abuse is so that we can stay away from that. Just the way Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, he used to go to the market and he used to ask the people, tell me, what is this? And he would ask them questions. And he would say that if you don't understand what interest is, you're going to involve in it. So we need to understand what abuse is so that we are not the abusers. And not only that, it may be happening to us. And we may not recognize that this is abuse. And the thing about abuse is that if it goes unchallenged, it tends to increase, it tends to level up. And such that you see so many times a, a breaking news, murder-suicide. And the saddest part of this is when it comes to be in, in Muslim community. When you see a sister Fatima was killed by her husband named Muhammad so-and-so. How sad how painful it is to read these type of headlines. My dear brothers and sisters, there is abuse which is physical. Things like neglecting physical needs. Things like pitch, pinching, hitting, pushing, slapping, kicking, pulling hair, using weapons or you know, any household things around the house, throwing objects, using physical restraints, and even things like force tickling are things that if that, of course, force tickling, if the other person doesn't like it, then you are basically harming them. But there is also another form. You know, a lot of us, we think about, okay, physical is abuse. But you know what? There are other forms of abuse which can be even more damaging. Because, you know, if you get a cut on your finger, that cut will heal. But if you get a cut on your personality, if you get a cut on your self-image, it will take a lot longer to heal if it ever heals, if it ever heals. So there is the form of abuse which is verbal, which is insults, name-calling, mocking. You know, maybe she comes from a different tribe or a different city and a person makes fun of them. Maybe that, you know, your people do this and they have, you know, whatever stereotypes there might be. There's also psychological abuse, where a person uses things like threats to divorce, or deport, or ruin reputation in order to control her. Even threats of taking a second wife when using it as a threat to just make her do things. Offensive jokes, humiliation, these are all forms of psychological abuse. There's also financial abuse. In Islam, the woman's money, the wife's money, is her money. But sometimes in abusive relationships, the abuser, who might be the husband in this case, he confiscates her paycheck. And he doesn't allow her access to her own money. And maybe keeps taking money from her, doesn't return it. Uh, making her feel guilty that he provides for her. You know, in Islam, when you marry a woman, if you do not have any other arrangement decided before you get married, when you are providing for your wife, you are not doing her a favor. 
You are not doing her a favor, but rather you signed up for this when you married her. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us a guideline, which is that الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ But this does not mean that a person takes advantage and he says, well, you know what, I'm providing for you, so now you have to do things which you don't want to do. Even I've heard of, you know, I've, I've told you this before, that a man said to his wife, he said that the Prophet ﷺ said that if there was anyone who should uh, bow down to someone, it should be a wife to her husband, so bow down to me. But the Prophet ﷺ did not allow that. This is wrong. Also, sometimes a woman has no access to financial information, and she is completely dependent on asking her husband for every little thing that she needs. And that's another way to basically keep her under com strict control. Also not providing for her even if he has the means and depriving her and her children of basic needs. There's also abuse in terms of physical relationship. And I don't want to go into too much detail here because of the kids here. But basically, you know, that relationship is supposed to be a source of happiness and pleasure for both. If that's not happening, if it's being used as a punishment or if it's being used to its being withheld as a punishment, then this could be a form of abuse. And remember that I keep saying that this could be, this could be, because I don't want someone to come, go home and say, yeah, you know what, definitely everything checks out and I'm being abused. You may want to consult someone who knows that, okay, you know what, this is occurring as a pattern. Not only this, my dear brothers and sisters, there are invisible forms of abuse. For example, when a person isolates the other person from everyone else, doesn't allow them to have friends, doesn't allow them to go visit her family, doesn't allow them to go even, I've seen cases where they say, you are not allowed to go to talk to the imam. You're not allowed to go and talk to the imam. Why? Because they're afraid that if she goes and talks to anyone, then she will tell them what's happening to her and then I will be outed. And the Prophet ﷺ told us specifically, do not prevent your women from going to the masajid. This is a classic case of someone afraid of being outed when they are basically isolating her from talking to anyone. He doesn't want her talking to anyone. This is a very serious red flag. Um, also, prohibiting certain relationships, withholding affection, ignoring and restricting behavior that you can't do this and you can't do that, you can't do this and you can't do that. This type of stuff is basically making that person feel like they are in a prison and it does, it does a lot of damage. Not only this, there's something called spiritual abuse. Spiritual abuse occurs a lot in the Muslim community as well. Spiritual abuse is when one person uses Quran and Hadith to justify what they want from this person and basically make them do what they don't want to do. And again, you know, this person who may not even be doing his salahs regularly and he's telling her that, you know what, you know, I had a case once when a wife came and she complained to me about her husband and her husband said to her, Astaghfirullah, aren't you ashamed that you are bad-mouthing your husband? So he, he was basically saying that you are committing a sin by going to ask for help. This is spiritual abuse. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have so many ayat, we have so many hadith which tells us to stand up for the oppressed and to stand up against oppression, stand up against injustice, stand up against evil. And, there, and I have so many of these ayat here but we all know these ayat. We all know these ayat. But the problem is that so many times, even if it's not happening in our house, if it's happening in our brother's house, or in our son's house, and we know about it, and we are not standing up and we are not defending that, that weak victim of this abuse, don't you think we will have to answer for that in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And think about this, every one of us that has a daughter, our worst nightmare 
is if someone is doing that to my daughter. You know, just, just think about exact same thing that a person is doing to someone else and you know about it. How would you feel if someone, one of your friends, one of your relatives knew that this was happening to your daughter and that person not only didn't do anything, didn't come and tell you that, hey, something wrong is happening here. How would you ever forgive that person? How could you allow this to happen to your daughter? Think about this. That woman, she's also someone's daughter. Just the way you raise your daughter with love and you fulfill every need that she has and you cannot see any harm to come upon her. The same way her father raised her the same way. Her father raised her the same way. So my dear brothers and sisters, conflict can happen, disagreement can happen, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran that you live with them in a good way, and if you're not getting along, you end the relationship in a good way. You try to go get help, go get counseling, Seek out someone who can help you, train you how to be a better husband. Be open to learning. Maybe you have a bad habit or maybe you have never learned to be a good husband. You know what, my dear brothers and sisters, if a father is abusive at home, if a father is abusive at home, his son who is being raised in that house, when he will get married and when he will have an argument with his wife, if he is not constantly, consciously trained to do different, he will repeat what his father did to his mother. He will repeat what his father did to his mother. And not only that, if a girl is being raised in this house and she sees her father abusing her mother, when she gets married and her husband abuses her, if her mother just stayed quiet and just sat down and didn't do anything, then she will think that this is what a wife is supposed to do as well. So by you being abusive, you're basically creating a generational abuse that will continue for how long until somebody consciously says, no, we have to stop. So my dear brothers and sisters, every one of us makes a mistake. The first thing we can do is when we realize is number one, say, Ya Allah, forgive me for what I have done in the past and change, intend to change for the future. And if you feel like I don't know what to do better, there are resources available to help us learn to be better. Learning Islam, learning the way the Prophet ﷺ was as a husband, and even learning from non-Muslim resources, how to be a good husband, how to you know, improve your marital relationship, it can go a long way. And not only this, my dear brothers and sisters, I recommend to you every single father here and every single person that will have a marriage taking place in their family, please do not ignore the importance of premarital counseling where we actually sit down both the boy and the girl before they get married and we educate them about what good marriage is, what proper marriage is, what proper conflict is, what proper disagreement between a husband and wife is, and what abuse is as well. You know what, if a person, if a woman is educated about what abuse is, and the first time something occurs, and she understands that what just happened to me, I need to address it head on. And she tells her husband that look, this is not acceptable. You know what, I will forgive you maybe this one time, but I will not forgive you the second time. It's very likely that it will not happen again. It's very likely that it will not happen again. And not only that, if you know that someone is being abusive, it's our job to stand up. One woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and she asked him about a proposal that she had received about from two men. And the Prophet ﷺ told her that such and such men beats his woman. He told her that such and such person beats his woman. So we have a responsibility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the proper understanding. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among the people who follow the example of the Prophet wasallam in dealing with our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our families are the strongest and the most uh, uh, vocal opponents of our righteousness not the people outside. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد النبي وعبدك ورسولك اللهم صل عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة